Hello and welcome to my review of Allergen Rom, which is uh, T-E-M-A-S-E-K, so Timasix build version 5. Uh, this is brought to us by a developer called Fabioio, uh, F-A-B-I-O-I-O. -I -O. Uh, to note, uh, he apparently built this for his device and uh, it ran so good he decided to share it. Thank you for that. Uh, we are very grateful for it. This is an excellent ROM. It's based on CyanogenMod and uh, it's built with CAF but it is also on the updated KitKat sources so uh, you can use the KitKat modem and you can use a stock KitKat modem and your rotation will work. Uh, it also adds to the smoothness and the fluidity of this ROM. I did not test this with any other kernel but the uh, one it came with which is actually Dr. 87's simple AOSP kernel and I did test it with the render kernel which is what I'm using it on right now and uh, I can tell you that I prefer the Dr. 87 kernel that is a preference uh, I have seen many users prefer the render kernel over uh, other kernels but so far my experience has been uh, to use the stock provided Dr. 87 kernel Okay, so I had to change the theme. I realized that the theme that I was on with the transparent menus and backgrounds was going to be very difficult to see on video. So let's go through the settings for this ROM. Home, obviously, you're going to have your launchers here. That's what you're going to be presented with. It does come with the Cyanogen Mod uh, launcher. And depending on your gaps, uh, the gaps I use comes with the Google Now launcher. And I am using the Google Now launcher, as you can see there. The settings in this widget, or sorry, the settings in this ROM are a little confusing at first. It takes some time to get used to to find where everything's at, uh, but once you uh, dig into them a little bit, uh, it becomes more natural. So here we are to lock screen settings. Here you got your screen security, uh, battery status. If you want to see on the lock screen, I like to be able to know. Slider shortcuts are there, and I'll show you. There you go. You got your one, two, three, four ring. Okay. Show sliders before the secure unlock, notifications on lock screen, and you are presented with some options here. You have the peak option, and you can use peak in conjunction with the lock screen notifications. Uh, I did not uh, use peak on a regular basis, but it does work. I prefer the lock screen notifications method. Uh, you can turn off the pocket mode and the wake on notification, hide low priority, hide non cacheable or clearable, sorry, uh, exclude applications, you can add applications there to exclude, you can offset it depending on the widget you have on the home screen, I'm sorry, on your lock screen, and privacy mode, expand the notifications, etc. Alright, let's go back. Continuing on, custom widgets, allow all widgets, camera widget, clock widget, maximize widgets, and disable widget frames. You got your new Cyanogen Mod theme manager. Very nice, very useful, and obviously it works as I've already changed the theme here. Uh, there is a user who reports that it does not work for him on reboots, but I do not lose themes on reboots. I have not had that problem. Here's your status bar, here's your clock options. Okay. Battery status style. Signal icon, brightness control, show notifications, double tap to sleep. So that's where you'll find that in network traffic meter. meter. Notification drawer. There you go. Quick settings panel. I'm presented with quite a few options here, including your tiles and layout. There you go. Background style. Obviously, you can use a custom image if you like. I am transparency. One interesting thing here is that you have two ways of getting your notifications. You have the heads up method here, which is what I'm using, or you can use Hover. Hover is the new one from Paranoid Android. So it's nice to have those options here. And there's your Hover settings right here. This is nice to see that you can exclude low priority and exclude topmost app, exclude insecure lock screen, exclude non-clearables, require full screen mode. I mean this is, this is very nice to have <clears throat> those options built in with uh, the hover 
notification system. You can also use, here we got the spare parts, Omniron features. I do like the breathing, the notification that uh, flashes, especially since I'm leaving the status bar visible in my expanded desktop because this is using, uh, you can't tell from here, it's using the Chameleon Engine, and I'll show you when we open another app what that does. Screens and animations, here you go. Wake Clock Blocker, uh, I do recommend using this. Uh, use Greenify, uh, I'm sorry, use Wake Lock Detector, figure out what's keeping your phone awake. I'm using Greenify for a lot of things, but the Wake Lock Blocker is helping a lot. Oop. All right. Some more options there. Now you would think that these are all of your options, okay? However, you can kind of go through here and you'll see you got volume steps here. That's nice. Your volume panel style expandable. You've got your volume panel timeout, so you could change how long that sets up there. You got your quiet hours here. You got your uh, DSP, which you know manager, which is usually here. Ringtone, vibrate, ascending ringtone, uh, notification stuff here, system stuff, okay. So there are a couple settings there. Display and lights. Here are some settings that you might not know to look for in here. Uh, we'll scroll down. Here's your expanded desktop style here. Okay, and you can disable on lock screen. All right, you have uh, some extra settings in here, like the recent panel settings. Okay, so you can switch this to the thin, to the uh, slim style. I'm using the uh, standard style. Okay. That's there. You wouldn't know to look for that there. You got the app bars here. That does work. Gesture anywhere is in here. Screen recorders in here. Okay. Smart cover wake and the inaccuracy proximity, which I did check. A lot of times, oftentimes, in AOSP based ROMs, it seems that when you are on a phone call and you have the phone to your ear, it does a good job of turning the phone screen off. What it doesn't do is when the phone call ends, it doesn't turn it back on, the screen back on for you. That will do that automatically, so it's kind of a cheat. Buttons, here's some more, again, you wouldn't have to look in here. Power menus located in here. Uh, navigation bar, your navigation bar settings are located here. I did disable the navigation bar, and I'm using Pi. This is, of course, the uh, standard Pi, not the PA style Pi. All right. Pressing the volume button makes your device. All right, and that's pretty much all the custom settings you find in this ROM. Of course, you've got the built-in performance app here, uh, and it works very well. All right, so here we have Netflix. You see, it's working here, no problem. I had no issues with Netflix. At all, video playback was fine. YouTube app, no problems at all. Uh, videos, uh, the only thing I did notice is that on version 4, it seemed like it got a little hotter than it does on version 5 when streaming Netflix. Um, other than that, temperature seemed to have cooled down rather quickly. Um, did not see any slowing down on the scrolling. It seems like it's very fluid. We'll go ahead and open up Tap Talk here and we'll go ahead and scroll through it. Uh, of course, this app is notorious for its scrolling slowness, but you know, we'll give it a shot. We'll see what we got here. We'll take a quick look at all the forms I am subscribed to and reading whenever there's updates. Quite a few. Let's go to one I haven't read quite everything yet. I mean, we got some choppiness here, but that's probably equated to the app. Once it loads up, you see it's pretty fluid. All right, so there's your scrolling there. Um, benchmarks and battery life. Let's pull those up for you. Okay, so let's talk about the performance and battery life of this ROM. This is just a real quick example of uh, temperatures. Average temperature is around 44 degrees. It's a little high for average temperature, but it does. Uh, it seems to hover there during average use. And uh, I saw some random core ramping up. I will say this did calm down after some time with the ROM, so letting the ROM settle in real good was kind of key. Did notice this odd swarm wake lock, and uh, what I basically had to do is I, I went and, and I greenified that. 
and then I use the built-in wake lock blocker uh, to prevent it from happening again. And I'll show you that. So here we go. Here's our first battery life drain test on the stock provided kernel. 18 hours, 1 minute, 42 seconds. And uh, as you'll see here, we did a pretty good job of keeping our wake time and our screen on time close together there. 3 hours and 46 minutes. And I believe, I mean, you can see here we still had 30-something uh, percent left. So, I mean, we could have very easily broke into the 5-hour range very easily. Here we go. Looking through here, these are our wake clocks again. Um, these are pretty average. This is actually still haven't had a chance to, to block it yet or greenify it yet and then use the wake clock blocker, but I do eventually do that. Here's your benchmark out of the box, 31,345. Here it is again. Here are my trickster settings for you. So you can see this was on this benchmark was on row. This one is on deadline, 32,949. I'm sorry, on noop. Noop, I apologize, it's on noop. Uh, 1024. I usually do test deadline. I didn't test it here. Here's your <clears throat> wake clocks again. And uh, this time, what I've done here is I've re enabled the status bar on the immersion mode, on our expand desktop mode. And that gives us access to the chameleon engine, which is included in this particular build that I'm testing. However, in the next build, it might be an option uh, because the battery does not uh, theme itself with the chameleon engine. And uh, our wonderful developer, Evil Dope, is working on it, but he might not have it uh, quite worked out by the next release. Another battery drain test. Here we go. We're at 7% battery life left. And you can see I'm just trying my hardest to kill it here towards the end. Again, looking at our wake clocks, they're pretty lined up with our screen on. And here we are, 4 hours and 54 minutes of screen on time. So, uh, looking pretty good here. Here are our wake clocks. Nothing really unusual. This is after I've used... Here we go, the wake clock blocker, as you can see here. I blocked the audio mix, and I blocked the four square stuff down here. And it seems that uh, another drain test, 5% left, and I got 5 hours and 22 minutes of screen on time. So um, you can see it definitely worked when I uh, used the built-in wake clock blocker. I suggest that you study what your ROM is doing, figure out what's keeping it awake, and uh, if it's something that you don't want it to keep it awake, then block it. And it's a nice feature here. Uh, we're at 25% battery life left, and we got 4 hours and 10 minutes of screen on time. I mean, this is fantastic. This is probably on track for more of a 6-hour screen on time uh, period, which is gr this amazing for my usage. Uh, I can't say enough good things about the battery life of this ROM. Here is the ROM with the render kernel. We're at 24,912. And one thing I want to show you about the uh, the way the notification system works when you enable it, um, <clears throat> you'll have this nice little pop up here that you can slide away, but the heads up, or you can push, you can drag down, and you'll be presented with some options for most of these. Very nice, very nice indeed. And those are the screen life and battery life tests for this ROM. I don't normally talk about pictures with these ROMs because I use the Google Experience camera. However, I do want to show you that in natural light, the Google Experience camera does a very good job. Um, you got excellent colors here that are brought up, and this is in uh, direct sunlight with some shade, uh, but natural light, and the detail captured by this camera is just fantastic. So the application itself does a great job. This was taken over the fourth of on the 4th of July. Um, excellent job, but here's where it doesn't do so good. Here is indoors artificial light. Uh, you had a secondary light source coming out from behind. I just could not get the focus in on my dog there. Um, she was having a tender loving moment with the cat, go figure, and I was trying to capture it. I literally took three pictures. This is the only one that didn't come out super blurry, so it wasn't able to get past this light source behind it. So that's all I'm going to say on this camera. If you want to know more about it, check out my Mahdi ROM review. All right, so here we go. We're going to do a power on test. See how long it takes before it gets too good. All right, we started the timer. Timer's going right here in here. This is your boot animation. Uh, Fabio Yo, hopefully I'm saying his name properly. I'll just call him Fabio for right now. Uh, he is, uh, he did provide a zip file that you can utilize or uh, for the, the different boot animation if you so choose. I think that's the, uh, the one from Team of Sick. Uh, there we go. So, I stopped it a little bit later there. So, a little over 20, probably 25 seconds even, a little over 24. Really good there. Um, so, there's a, another boot animation that you can use. Um, the form, 
Uh, it's at 937 posts as of this video, and the developer is a huge fan. In fact, he requires log cats. Please provide log cats. I made the mistake of uh, reporting an issue that I had with Hangouts uh, video, to be more precise. If I was doing a video Hangouts with uh, the wife and my daughter, they could not hear me unless I switched it from the uh, speakerphone microphone to the um, microphone that you would normally use when you're using the phone normally instead of speakerphone. So that was interesting. I did test the phone on speakerphone and the speakerphone worked fine. It just didn't, for some reason, Hangouts wouldn't grab that uh, speakerphone mic. So a small issue. I went to go report it and uh, I was asked to produce a log cat. So I went ahead and ran it and ran the log cat and provided that for the developer and uh, I completely understand why he would ask for those and why we should provide those so please log cats I will even leave a link to the application that I use which is down here called syslog I'll leave you a link for that I'll even show you how to run a log make a name for it if you want to if you don't you don't have to change it to all logs here take a log done I always upload it to Dropbox and all my log cats for this ROM. There they are, just like that. That easy, that simple, there they are. Okay, um, create a folder for them. The form is rather friendly, uh, friendlier than most, but uh, again, the developer, he, did, he built this ROM for himself and he is sharing it with us, so uh, keep that in mind. Bluetooth A2DP did work very well, however, it did not allow my 4Touch to handle the text messaging services. Um, I could send them through the head unit, the, the pre-responses that are programmed in the head unit. However, I could not receive them. It would not read them over the system, and it wouldn't show that I had a text message on the system. That was kind of annoying, but everything else worked fine. Streaming music, A2DP, um, the metadata, everything else worked fine. Quick connection, fast connection. I did try to troubleshoot to see uh, sometimes if I stop the Bluetooth services and restart them or turn the phone off and resync or clear it all out. Sometimes I can get to work, but in this case, it did not. It did work fine with the uh, Kia Uvo system as well as far as sharing uh, the metadata and streaming the music. Sound quality is just as you'd expect over Bluetooth, and I had no problems with it. Uh, overall, this this ROM here has been excellent for daily driver. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I like the customization features. Uh, it's very stable. The few issues I had, again, I reported, and uh, I mean they were they're very minor. This ROM is very solid. I'm glad to see it's on the KitKat sources. It's less work for you coming from a KitKat ROM or from stock KitKat as most uh, people are using right now. I did try out Art and art works fine. I'm back on Dalvik for this one because I was testing the uh, render kernel and I wanted to get a good test with the render kernel without having any possible art related issues. So uh, to be as accurate as possible in my reporting, but art did work fine and it is, uh, I wouldn't say 100% noticeably smoother because the ROM's already smooth, but uh, in some apps like Facebook or um, even Tapatalk, I did notice that it did seem to scroll a little bit quicker, but that's to be expected. Hopefully you found this video useful. Uh, I do recommend this ROM. Give it a try. Um, it's very stable. It comes from a very good developer. And uh, again, if you found this video useful, give me a thumbs up. If you have more questions or you didn't see something tested for this ROM, please ask. I do keep a baseband backup, which I have had to use a couple times while testing this ROM to make sure I can accurately report to you what it does. I can easily restore and test for you something else you want to see.